I'm Chosen Architect, and this is my modded adventure. Now, last episode, we dove into the occultism mod, really just the early stages of progression. But today we're going to put all of those things that we did last episode to use, and we are going to get into the most powerful parts of occultism today. Ah, uh, yes, I did say powerful. And that also means we're going to be doing some pretty powerful things ourselves, uh, such as the ability to pick up certain mobs. Like, for example, remember that crusher? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can suspend their timer because by default, these guys do decay over time. Now, the top tier ones do not, but these little guys, they do decay the early forms um, of the spirits. So picking them up in a mob yonker is going to be pretty cool. But I do have plans for this to go even further. Uh, so we have a mob yonker and there is a special spirit that I want to summon. Um, and uh, it is called Afrit. <laughs> <laughs> this person right here is what's going to allow us to make the high tier rituals. But we do need to summon this guy. And to do that, we're going to need the Abra's Open Conjure, uh, basically ritual. Uh, and then we're going to need these few items here. And that is essentially going to summon this occultism mini boss uh, is essentially what uh, it's going to be. But I don't think fighting it the normal way is going to be the best way to fight it. Now to summon, we're going to need this particular ritual here, uh, which is listed in the book. Best way to see this, we're going to need Abra's Open Conjure, and this is going to allow us to summon in the Alfred boss. Now it does come with a little bit of caveat. Um, there will be blaze spawning. I will warn you, blazes do spawn in this and can be kind of destructive as they can light your base on fire. Hopefully we can take them on fast enough and hopefully handle all of that. Um, but yes, this does require Wither Skeleton Skull, and uh, so it does have a little bit of progression gating. You can't do this just right away without having those things. So, uh, let's put our Sacrificial Bulls in, and these right here, they're going to work, uh, and we just need to provide it the few items that it requests here. So, Netherrack, and uh, it looks like Quartz and Flint and Steel, all of these things. Now, my goal is to hopefully be able to capture this thing. I know, that's, uh, that sounds kind of cheesy, and yeah, it, it is kind of cheesy, but you could, I, I assume, put this in any mob duplicator, um, not just specifically one from ours. I do want to try it, though, first from the one in ours, but uh, yeah, you should be able to do it from any, but like I said, this is going to spawn blazes, so yeah, that's going to be interesting. So now that we have all of our individual items, there's still something else that we need to make. So we'll get all of these put, put in, the flint and steel, nice. Um, we need to make this book, the book binding of F Alfred, or a, a Frit, <laughs> which is going to require purple dye. It looks like I do have that. And then yet again, we'll combine this with this book. And now we should be able to summon it. However, it does need one special thing in order for this to work. And that is going to be, we're going to have to sacrifice a mob. So when we place this in, it hasn't started yet because we haven't sacrificed the mob yet. And that needs to be a cow. And so now that we've sacrificed the cow, it is now in its summoning phase and the per particles are now appropriate and it should start consuming these. It's going to take a little bit of time. Now we can definitely accelerate that just a little bit. Even going four times is really fast. Like I said, the, the prior episode, I mentioned that the only thing that is a pain about occultism is honestly just waiting. But here we go. This should summon, and I just want to grab the boss. Let's just yoink the boss, and let's kill these guys as quick as possible. Because they are just regular blazes. Woo! There we go. Okay. So we got our blazes, and now we have our unbound, uh, or we have our, our Alfred right here, right? This is the boss. Um, and yeah, it will attack you. <laughs> At least it should attack you. But what I want to do is I want to capture it in a jar from Apotheosis. Sorry, not Apotheosis, Ars Nouveau. I don't know why I have Apotheosis on my brain right now. Maybe it's something to do with how powerful those spawners are. Uh, so containment jar, and then we'll spawn the mob. And now it's inside the containment jar. And I hope that our Drigmies can farm this. 
Now, normally it's going to drop that material that uh, this stuff right here, this it, it just shows that it's an item, but it drops this essence and this essence is used for making the chalk, but it's also used in other recipes that we're probably going to want later on down the road. So instead of having to summon this over and over again, we should be able to just put it into our Drigme farm and just let them farm it for right now. And hopefully they farm the essence that we're going to need. Perfect. Just like clock clockwork, we now have some essence and it did farm it, which is amazing. Oh, that is great. So now that we have this essence, uh, because there's no requirements to actually killing this thing. And honestly, you can kind of go pacifist run if you really wanted to. Um, but yes, now that we have this essence, we can now upgrade and make a impure red shock and upgrade that to the red shock. And this gives us access to some of the highest tier rituals available. We can go all the way up to the, I have no idea how to pronounce it, the inverted tower. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try, because I know I get corrected. But we can take it all the way up to this because this ritual requires that chalk. It requires the candles, some skulls, and this ritual right here specifically is used to make the highest tier spirit crafting. So the bind of the Merid, uh, this right here, those are some of the highest tier things. And we can take a look in occultism and see specifically that book, uh, which is this right here. This is the highest binding book. And this is, this makes a ton of things. So it's used to make the tier four dimensional storage stabilizers, which is massive storage. However, it does require a lot of this block, but it's also used to make the master miner, which has a high durability. It uses dragon's breath, a nether star, nether, a netherite pickaxe to make this master miner. Now the master miner is really cool because it can actually farm up the esnium ore, uh, isnium ore, I think it's isnium. Uh, this right here, it can farm that. It can also farm Stella, Stella. It can farm the Stellarite. Um, so there's tons of different things we can farm. My thing I'm after is the Uranite. Uh, so having access to that is going to be really nice, but it'll also allow us to make the highest tier of our, uh, so yeah, it'll allow us to make the highest tier of our foliate as well. The mining, uh, not foliate, the miner. So I believe this right here also will show yeah, this right here summoned the uh, the Myriad Crusher. And this Crusher is fantastic. This is the highest tier Crusher and will allow us to dupe a bunch of our ore, but it is gonna require some of this material. So I think before we even have this, we need to use some of the ore that we have and actually make that miner that we set out to make early on. Now you don't have to jump the gun. You can make a lower tier miner, uh, just a basic one right here. Um, it's durability is a little bit lower, and I don't know if that's a huge deal in our case with the, the durability being lower. Um, but yes, you do need this ingot here. And I guess for right now, we should be able to take like three of these ores and let's go ahead and feed it to the one thing that we do have. And that is our current crusher, right? So we can go ahead and feed that to this guy and it's actually gonna duplicate it for us. So we'll at least get two out of this one. If we had the other tier, it would give us three per, and then four, and then the last tier, I believe, can give us six per ore. <laughs> I know, that's pretty ridiculous, and it's pretty fast, whereas this one's actually pretty slow. So from the three we ended up giving it, we now get six in return. Ah, that is the good part about occultism and its crushers, is it's kind of worth getting into, because like I said, it's like a free crusher, uh, however, it does have a lifespan, but we can extend that lifespan by not just letting it linger. We can definitely put it inside of a yoinker for now. I don't think it's going to continue to uh, to, to change. So if I take a look at it, it's still at 9% and we've had it in our inventory for a little while. So nice, we've made it all the way to this stage and we now have our red chalk. We have all of the chalk variants. We've basically completed our chalk simulator. What I need to do now is prep for this massive ritual that we're going to have down here. And I don't think this area is anywhere big enough for this. So let's take a look at the actual ritual itself. The one that's going to make the master minor for us. So if I try to find the middle-ish of the room here, let's just go ahead and try and put it here. We're going to notice how much area we're actually going to need to clear out in order for this ritual 
to work. Like we, we almost had a big enough area for this. It was pretty close. And so I've got to get all of this cleared out and ready to go for this. Very, very nice. This is the final tier and it is now complete. Um, so this is just one of the high tier rituals. And this is where this one's going to be located that we're going to be using to essentially craft that genie lamp that is going to generate ores for us. But there are a couple of other steps that we're going to need to do before this. And I hope I'm not being too confusing by showing this is uh, the high tier rituals here uh, because there are other rituals that we are going to need to make in order to still get to this point because we still need to make the dimensional mine shaft that this goes in. And so this is going to use one of that we already have, which is the Sojourner's Higher Binding. But as you see, it is going to require a full block of this Isium. And this stuff is super rare to find in the world. So this means in total, I'm going to need at least 13 um, Isium ingots in order to do this. So uh, currently, I don't have but six. Um, so I'm going to need to use our Crusher again. And I'm just going to crush out the remaining ore that we have and this little guy is going to put in the work and that should be enough so I believe this ritual right here is the higher binding uh that we have so yeah we're gonna have to frame it out we have to have the actual dimensional mine shaft in order to be able to do this now it does use five things so we already have everything ready to go and this is going to use five things it requires four other stone actually it requires six right so uh no seven so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, yeah, seven in total. So we're gonna need a few more bowls. We already have five. So two more bowls into this setup. Just like that should be fine. Um, and one of those things is a full block of this. Oh boy. Uh, and then it's gonna require a spirit attuned, which is gonna be diamonds. So I am gonna need a few more of those. It does seem like that's gonna be pretty common. Might as well make a bunch of them. And so toss those bad boys in and that is done because I mean, this is a big thing that we're crafting here. Uh, it, it generates resources. I mean, it should be a big thing. Um, and there's, there's other kinds that we can make. Like there's another ore miner that I want to look into as well that will hopefully allow us to, um, generate just like raw resources. Uh, some things like cobble and like, uh, andesite and things like that. Uh, we'll have to take a dive into that, but it looks like just gold for this and this right here. And then the final thing is going to be the genie, which requires green. Of course, out of all the things, I don't have cactus laying around, so I'm going to have to smelt some of that. Looks like this is a job for none other than this. Let's see. I could probably toss the items here and let's do the smelteruno. There we go. <laughs> None other than ours coming in for, uh, to, to the rescue. Um, so yes, this is going to need this book. And then we just combine that with the Dictionary of Spirits. And perfect. We get the things we need. So one, two, three, four. And then we'll have the gold. And then this goes here. And then we have the Spirit Attuned that goes here. Now, so like I said, some of these just take a long time to work. And in this particular case, it is probably going to take a little bit of time to make this. So let's just go ahead and give it a little bit of speed here. You see, it hasn't even consumed anything yet. It just takes a long time. Some of these higher tier ones take a significant amount of time in order to give you the thing you need. So this is just making that mine shaft. Now we also need to take a look at the, um, uh, while this is working, take a look at the occultism lamp the master lamp, which is what I want to make. And this thing right here is going to require a ton of filler items and including the book itself, but it's going to require a ton of filling items to be able to make this. So I just gathered up a few of those items. It should be finishing up its craft now. I think I had everything ready to go, but yeah, it does. Like I said, it, it's still taking, I had enough time to gather all of these items craft these things, including a pick, and it's still taking a little bit of time here. There it goes. <laughs> it just goes to show these things. Now, I did receive a quest for this. So inside of the quest here, that was one of the things that uh, was, was really important about generating resources. 
Now it is under the magic section, but underneath the resource generation, it does talk here about a lamp. There is the ore miner. This is the basic version. I really need to change these quests to make sure to can accept any kind. Um, but yeah, this is definitely needed to generate more resources. Um, so we have this and now we need to go down here and I'm just going to, for right now, I'm going to nab these. Uh, let's not use these picks. Let's use this pick. I'm just going to nab my bowls because you can actually use bowls from any. You don't have to make more than what you have. It's just kind of convenience thing. But I'm going to take these bowls down here and we are going to use this in our current setup down here. So now with our seven individual items, let's go ahead and get those placed on. Just like so. Very nice. I'm excited to hopefully get more of the material because we're making this higher tier one. Uh, but there we go. This should be seven. And now we need to come up with the book itself, uh, which shouldn't be too bad. It looks like we are going to need some orange. Always ends up with me just never having the appropriate dye for things. And that's usually the like little last bit. Uh, so purple, that should be pretty straightforward. Okay. So with this being our hardest part to come up with, that's just a joke. Um, we now can craft this thing. Oh boy. All of this work leading up to this moment. There we go. Now this is going to generate that lamp and is going to take some time. I definitely recommend speeding this up as much as you can. If you have a time in the bottle, definitely use it because this will take some time. If you don't, and when you know it, it should give us a lamp now. <laughs> oh boy. Now, this lamp has a durability. And remember in the past, we made some things that help with durability, didn't we? Oh boy. And I actually have a Stella laying around. So, actually I have two of them that I made. Um, so, I have this Stella and I should be able to technically apply a Stella to this. I don't see why not. And that would give us unlimited durability on this, would it not? Well, we'll kind of have to see because I know in the past, Stella's worked kind of interesting. They, they only worked whenever they were put into your inventory. Um, so yeah, that could be something we have to deal with, um, but we'll, we'll definitely see. So in the forbidden mod, right? We have to have, be able to use this correctly. We're going to need a smithing template. And I don't have the one right here. So let's see. Forbidden template. Go ahead and make one of those. Um, and that should be everything we need, right? We just need to go to our smithing table and then apply these things. Oh boy. So this should make it an eternal master miner. Okay. And so now it doesn't even have a durability where that, that number is now gone. And so how does this exactly work? How, how do we actually use this? Well, we place it here and we put something on top and we put this inside and it's supposed to generate resources. You see, it's going pretty quick and it generated resources, right? Um, which is pretty darn cool. Now it would normally take durability hits every time this is, this is happening. But it's not because we applied that eternal Stella. We now have an unlimited master miner that is going to mine up resource for us. Oh, it's beautiful. Now we can take this out at any time and we should also be able to, to break this, right? And I, I do want to check this. Um, can we, uh, will it automatically deposit items into a barrel, for example? Uh, cause that's something I, I don't know if it'll do. Um, I haven't been able to test this too much. So will this automatically push items into the chest beneath it? Cause that would be really handy if it did. Okay. It doesn't seem like it does. Um, but that could be solved. That could definitely be solved. Uh, and there's a couple of ways that we could do this. I mean, aside from just hooking a pipe directly to it. Uh, but there are some mobs in here that can do it. I think basically we can do industrial there's item transporters from industrial that I think would look kind of futuristic, very similar to how this is already set up. Um, and we could probably hide a, a barrel, right? We could, we could put it like right here, right? And let's go ahead and put the barrel 
like right here. And then we'll put an item transporter here. Um, and what we can do is on top of that, we can place the dimensional mine shaft and put another item transporter here. And I think this would work. We put this in here and I don't think this will get pulled out. But as this generates resources, we just need to open the valve basically to let the items in. And now it's automatically pulling the items out of there into here, right? Uh, and we can cover this up. We don't need to see this happening in this single block space. Uh, we can use some trap doors that will kind of cover everything up and make it look like everything else we've been doing. We'll scrap some stone and we'll just place the trap doors here that match all of the other trap doors that I've placed down. And that actually looks pretty good. And this right here is our miner. Now we just need to tap into that barrel with some other mod. And we now have unlimited resource generation and it's producing all kinds of goodies. Now, even though we have this miner going, there's still another step that I wanna do to make things even more powerful. Yeah, I feel the occultism energy flowing and well, I'm gonna have to go mining for a bit more of the Izium ore. Uh, yeah, that's the only downside. So I've got to get that all of, all done. I probably only need a few more and I'll let my crusher crush that stuff up. But because I'm going to need a block of it. But once we have this crusher, I don't think we'll have to worry about that anymore. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. But it is going to require another large ritual. So this is uh, Fata's, Fatma's um, incentivized attraction. And this is another really, really big ritual here and I want to fit this in just right I'm gonna have to extend this whole area here to fit this um but yes as you see right here this is quite quite the ritual oh boy and so that means I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of fitment to get this in correctly so here we go that ritual is now set up and I'm gonna do a little bit of mining and a little bit of crushing but we're about to have the best or duplicator in the entire pack. So after a little bit of a lengthy journey, I now have a little bit more than I actually needed in order to complete this process. So let's use the crusher that we currently have. It's not anything crazy, but we are gonna need enough. And I did notice the decay hasn't gone down while inside of this. So we need an entire block of this. So two, four, six, eight, and that would end up being, so five of these crushed down will end up being enough to make an entire block of it. And I, I, I gathered a little bit more than I needed. And I do have another block of this inside here. So we do have three blocks. And then this should make more of this. Uh, but I, I didn't see any in the, what it's currently generating, which I can't believe it's already generated two Stellas. Uh, but that's besides the point. Um, so once this gets enough, we're going to be making a much faster and better version of this. But there's something cool that I also want to do that is completely beside the fact that this exists the way that it does. It's going to work very similar, but it's going to be faster and produce more. There's a mod in here that I added that combines occultism and ours together to allow you to use these guys in containment jars, apparently. In fact, I think we have everything we need in order to get the rest of this set up. Uh, the only thing that I am missing right now is just simply these. So let's grab these from this one. Let's borrow it. Now, this ritual looks very similar to this one. Um, however, it, this one is a little bit on the cheaper side as it doesn't require all those diamonds. Um, so getting a crusher early on would probably be very, very beneficial. Uh, and it's not too bad. You need a little bit of diamonds. This is the hardest thing to get is the uh, the es Esnium. Um, but yeah, we just need four of these in order to pull this in. And so we'll place this block here, this block here, a gas tier. Oddly enough, I really don't know why the gas tier is even in this recipe, but I'm sure it makes sense somewhere. Um, and then I need this book, which we've already used, which is the the Marriott. And then we'll combine that together. And this will make our high tier ore crusher. Yes, and I am going to be prepared to pick it up with the mob yoinker, just like our other one, because I want to try and put this in a containment jar. Yeah, I know. So let's get this sped up because it is going to take a little bit of time. Like I said, time is 
something about time. I don't know if there's a relation or correlation with the time things take and occultism, and there's a reason why it takes long for things. I don't know. But either way, <laughs> this is our crushing demon. Yes. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your name. I'm going to call you Fred. I was going to pick you up, Fred. So let's go ahead and see if we can't get this Fred guy into a containment jar from ours. I mean, that just seems reasonable, right? And I wonder how we can interact with this guy. So I'll put my jar down, spawn him in, and he should go in here. Okay, so now we have Fred inside of the containment jar. But how does Fred actually work in the containment jar? We can always dispel Fred, by the way. So we can take him out of the containment jar at any time. But let's go ahead and see. Does hoppers work with Fred? That is something that uh, I would love to check. So let's see. Can we place this here and place a containment jar on it and place that on top? And I don't know. Let's grab some of this ore that this has been generating. Or we can even try just our regular uh, Isium ore, right? And does that work? Okay, so it goes straight through, um, but can we filter this? Uh, can we just simply send one? Okay, he's going to crush it. Oh, and then just tosses it out. Okay, how much did he toss out? Six. So notice one ore turned into six. Oh my goodness. Um, now, we did notice that it did pull the item straight through. And what I'm thinking is it's probably going to do that. Um, and I don't think there's going to be a way to filter it out with like a pipe or anything like that. The final product. Uh, it, it probably just has a singular slot that goes in. It's just kind of cool that we can actually send it that way. Uh, but we do need to collect it when it is done. Oh boy, this is going to be really cool. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think what could I potentially try maybe to filter. I know we can pick it up with Starbuckles, and ultimately that might be a way to doing things. Or what I could do instead is maybe just have like some sort of container underneath here. And then we can use a basic collector and just reduce the range because these are really fast. So we just reduce the range down significantly and that should work. Yeah, we knock it all the way down to as low as it can go. Hide the range, right? And then try it. Yeah, and so that works, and that automatically puts the product inside here. And that could be hidden. We could definitely hide the collector on the back or something like that, where it's not, like, super-duper visible. But that's more than enough, I think, time to collect. Oh, boy. And then we could send these items over here, specifically, like, I don't know, how many, how many diamonds does this give? Like, can this crush diamonds? It gives us diamond grit, which is not exactly... So some things we don't want to give the crusher because it's probably going to create things that we don't necessarily want. But anything that can go to a crusher would probably be good. Like this should give us gold dust from the ore. Okay, so we'd have to specify specifically what we're giving it with like a laser node and a filter. But that should make six gold dust now. Oh, that's so neat. <laughs> yes. So, perfect. So this, we can take any of our raw material and now feed it to this crusher in this way and then take our product, which will be this gold dust, and we should be able to smelt it down. Uh, does this Is this going to work for things like iron? Let's see, iron ore. Can this be crushed? We'll have to look at all of these recipes. Yes, it'll turn into iron dust from occultism and so on and so forth. What about emerald? Emerald, okay, so emerald can't go in. It's just gonna be in its its ore form. Um, what about nether quartz? So nether quartz can be turned into nether quartz powder. However, it doesn't seem to have any further use. So stuff like that is things that I'm gonna have to keep in mind that I don't want uh, to send it. So now to set the things up that we're definitely going to want to go over here. So connected to the barrel that we have here, we're going to want an item card that is set to extract, but we're going to want to set a filter on this. It doesn't have to be fast, uh, but we do want a filter, and this is going to be the filter that we send very specific things. It's going to be an allow filter, 
And so we can send it some things, anything that can go in here, for example, looks like redstone can go in here. Um, we can send it, I don't think nether quartz could work, right? No, because it makes the powder. Um, gold, can this go in here? Yes, it makes gold dust out of this. So we want to make sure to definitely send it things that we know it can accept. Like, I don't think lapis powder is going to be anything of use to us. And, well, is it? It's used, yeah, not the same thing. So yeah, just going through the basic list here, um, and this is going to specifically filter on this channel that we had it set to uh, a lot of these individual items. So uh, like coal, can, he, can coal go into this? It can make powdered coal. Uh, yeah, powdered coal is probably not something that we want. Um, and the diamond, we don't want going in there. And we can send the other things to other places, but certain things like copper, gold ore, iron ore, all of those things can be processed with that crusher. We definitely want this ore going in there, all of these things. Now I'm gonna place down an advanced laser connector here, and then I'm gonna attach that over here. Uh, that way we can have infinite range, because by default, this only extends out to eight. So it is really nice to have this connected. And then we'll connect this one to this laser node, and then this one to this. Um, and now we should be able to put an insert card right here, and that should feed the items to it, hopefully. Um, as soon as we put our collector, it should collect. I don't know why zinc got sent. It should not be sending. We'll turn this all the way down. Nice. And so we should only see the products getting sent over here. I don't think I sent zinc. But yeah, there's there's all kinds of little things. Uh, did I put... Oh, I accidentally put, did put zinc in here. Zinc doesn't have a crushing ability, so if it doesn't, it's going to spit it out. But this is what I, I want to see. I, yeah. <laughs> We've effectively automated the demon, the crushing spirit, inside of a containment jar, and all of the products are going into this barrel from here. I think that's pretty darn cool. And, uh, well, that's occultism in a nutshell. Even though there's way more to occultism, uh, such as having familiars and all kinds of other stuff that give you cool effects, this is just the processing and ore and resource generation part, as there's way more to it. So with that, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Hopefully you learned something new, and if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Guys, I thank you so, so very much for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next episode. And it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that, my friends, is going to be a huge thanks going out to, to oh, Mr. Lego. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. Over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible and going absolutely above and beyond. Thank you so much for the tremendous support. And I do appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much for checking out the Discord. If you haven't already, be sure to do so. Link down in the description below. And guys, I hope to see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye!